Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of the uh, two Saul's. This is going to be the King Saul of the Old Testament. Now, how did we go from the Lord wanting to be our king to having a king of human flesh? Well, you see, when the Lord took Israel out of Egypt, he wanted to be their king. And he wanted to fight their battles. Uh, there was a time when Israel was uh, fighting against the Canaanites and uh, the Lord actually threw down hailstones upon them. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. You know, you're getting ready to fight an enemy and all of a sudden uh, large chunks of ice. Uh, I mean, you know, you're talking probably 20, 30 pound chunks of ice, maybe more, starts falling from the sky and smacking these guys in the head. Uh, better bring a lot of aspirin, right? You're going to have a big headache. All right, let's take a look at that. Now, that would be in Joshua chapter 10, and we're going to start from verse 1. Now, remember something. God wanted Israel to be like, you know, his children, and he had the Levites to be to give to administer his law, and his taxes were only 10%, a tithe. And the tithe was only for the Levitical priesthood, the Levites, one of the 12 tribes. 10%, that was it. Uh, have you ever heard that Capital One commercial? It says, what's in your wallet? Well, a lot less now that we have a king or a president. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. God wanted to fight our battles for us. But well, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. Joshua chapter 10, verse 1. All right, now remember. Uh, Israel had left Egypt, and they're going into the Promised Land, and the Promised Land is already filled with the Canaanites. They were the children of Canaan, who probably was, uh, not probably, they were, they were uh, satanic hybrid children of the fallen angels with the humans after the flood of Genesis 6. Now, that's where the sons of God marry the daughters of men. And you got idiots that'll tell you, well, you know, they're just good guys that marry those evil women. So when do good guys marrying evil women have giants for children? But the thing is, not all the Canaanites were giants. Not all of them. The Philistines, you know, you ever heard of the Philistines, the giants, David and Goliath, anyone? So keep that in mind. But they were Satan's, basically Satan's kids uh, opposing God's kids. And that's why they were in the promised land. I guess they, Satan knew that the Lord was going to give his children the promised land. So Satan's children basically are there waiting and saying, uh, we want, you know, Satan wanted God's throne, didn't work out, comes to earth. Uh, so plan B is in effect for Satan anyway. So Joshua 10.1. Now it came to pass when Adon Zedek, king of Jerusalem, now this is when Jerusalem was with the Canaanites, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it. Uh, you know why the Lord told Israel to destroy these things? They were satanic hybrids. You know, if they were just people following evil, God would have said, hey, uh, send evangelists down there. You know, we need a, an Apostle Paul to go down there and preach into them and tell them, oh, Jesus loves you and he wants you to be saved and believe on him. Uh, but that's not how it worked. 
God said, go in there and destroy it. You know, that's why people don't understand the Bible, because the preachers don't teach the truth anymore. Now it came to pass when Adon Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Uh, now the people of Gideon, Gibeon were, uh, you know, they heard all the destruction, so they... If I remember, seek, uh, remember, they secretly went to Joshua and pretended that they were friends and had Joshua make a, a, a contract or a peace pact with them. But they neglected to inquire of the Lord whether they should do this or not, if memory serves me correctly. I think that's what happened. You know, the Bible's a big book. I can't remember everything. Besides, I'm getting old and Alzheimer's setting in and, you know, so. Uh, so the inhabitants of Jerusalem, verse, chapter, uh, verse 2, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Therefore, Adon Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. So, uh, this is a, a military tactic, okay? When somebody that's an ally of you goes over to the enemy, uh, the best thing to do is wipe them out so that other cities don't do the same thing you know so it's either fight against the israelites or fight against your former allies i mean let's face it in world war ii if there was somebody that didn't want to fight and what did they do they executed him the united states did they firing squad and that was basically uh an example you know, oh, you guys don't want to fight the, uh, the the crowds? Well, we'll kill you. If the crowds don't kill you, we will. That's how you keep people in line, fear and intimidation. So that's what they wanted to do. All right, so. So, he, oh, so the king of Jerusalem got all these other kings of these other cities, said, come up. Unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore, the five, five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, and the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. So this is Israel. They're going to help this city that made peace with them, right? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man to them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up from Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Makedah. I hope I'm pronouncing those right. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel. Now listen to this. And we're in the going down to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven. Now were these rocks or were they 
hailstones. Sounds like they're rocks. And cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. Wow. So the Lord's casting down things at them from up in heaven. They were more which died with hailstones. All right, so they are hailstones, right? There were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Wow. So, would you rather uh, take your chances killing the enemy, or would you rather have the Lord do it for you? Verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Boy, it's been a long time since I've read the book of Jasher. Long time. Uh, probably 30 years ago, or close to it. Over 25, I'll guarantee you that. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. This was the long day of Joshua, they call it. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp of Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Mechada. Uh, let's see. I was thinking about reading the whole chapter, but, you know, it's a little bit long. Uh, basically, they took the kings and they killed them. Boom. End of story. So, you know, that was the, um, the theme. The Lord threw down hailstones. Now, but the children of Israel... There came a time when they don't remember this happening because all the old folks died, right? So now they got uh, prophets that are leading Israel. But then Israel decides, you know what? Um, we don't want the Lord to lead us. We want a king. Yeah, just like everybody else round about, we want a king. I know I read this just recently, but we're going to read it again. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Now, there's a reason why the people uh, wanted a king. And we're going to read about that. All right, so let's read from chapter, uh, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. And the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted justice. So, now Samuel was a good prophet. Samuel was a good, God-fearing Lord. Uh, he loved the Lord. But uh, he had a thing here. He, uh, he let his children run wild. Actually, he should have taken the children and removed them from office. And I think somewhere in the Bible, he was, the Lord uh, rebuked him for that. And if memory serves me correctly, the Lord killed his children. So, they took bribes and perverted justice. Sounds like America. Verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. 
and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken, or listen, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign over them. Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They've rejected me, and they don't want me to be their king or their ruler. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots and to be, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. All right. So instead of uh, the Lord throwing down hailstones and killing the enemy, uh, your kids, your sons, are going to be drafted into the army. And guess what happens when kids get drafted in the army? Casualties. People come back with missing hands and arms and legs and eyes. And that's if they come back at all and they're not buried in the battlefield. You want to see a sad sight? Go to a VA hospital. That's a sad sight. Verse 12, and he, the king, will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries. That's uh, like a pastry baker and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Oh yeah, when the IRS comes knocking at your door and takes all your stuff, don't come crying to me, because I ain't going to listen. Verse 19, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. Oh, yeah. You don't want the, the, the Lord? Well, I'm going to give you a king, all right. Can we get a modern-day uh, application? Yeah, we're going to have an, uh, United States is going to have an election tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, January 20, 2021. You got wicked rulers over in the UK, the EU, and guess what? One day we're going to have the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, who's ruled over by the dragon. You don't want the Lord as king? We'll see how you like the king. You don't want the Lord as king? We're going to give you another king and see how you like it. But uh, if you're into the pre-trib rapture, you don't think you're going to be here. Well, you might be disappointed. 
you might be very disappointed. You don't like God's laws? We'll give you the Noahide laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. The laws given to Noah. Gee, Chaplain Bob, I've never heard of the Noahide laws. Where's that in the Bible? Uh, it's not. What do you mean that it's not in the Bible? The laws given to Noah. Well, those laws only exist in the minds of rabbis. You know, those that uh, deny Jesus as Savior, as Jesus as the Christ, those that deny Jesus as the Messiah. Yeah, those. That's where the Noahide laws come from. People that deny Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord and Savior of the church. Verse 19, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations. Yeah, we want to be like the heathens, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto their voices, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Go home, people. You want a king? The Lord's going to give you your, the, the, the desires of your heart. Oh yeah, you're going to get a king. You want a king? You got it, baby. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 1. Now remember, uh, from part one of this study, uh, Benjamin was almost wiped out. Remember that? All right, 1 Samuel 9 and verse 1. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bichoroth, the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. He was tall. I guess that's the Bob translation. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave, caring for the asses, and take thought for us. Uh, I guess the thing is, he's like, you know, he's worried that his father, now this is how I'm looking at it. I guess he's thinking his father's like, boy, they've been gone a long time. I wonder if they've got lost too. You know, the asses are lost. Maybe my son's lost too. Or, you know, something bad happened to him, you know. Verse 6. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? So I guess they've been so long that they ran out of food, and they don't have anything to give. You know, it was customary if you went to see a prophet or a man of God, the seer, uh, You'd give him a gift. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. 
that I will give to the man of God to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. S-E-E-R. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. A uh, seer is just an old time, Old Testament word before a prophet. Uh, why were they called seers? Because they could see the future, I guess. That's what they, you know. So old time, seer is just an old word for prophet. Then sent Saul to his servant, well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young, young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he come today to the city, for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as ye be come into the city, he shall, ye shall straightway find him, for he, before he go up to the high place to eat, for the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for about this time ye shall find him. And they went up into the city, and when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying. So the Lord had told uh, Samuel that Saul was going to come. Verse 16. For tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. Those were the giants. Goliath was a Philistine. For I have looked upon my people because their cry has come unto me. Uh, you know, anointing, they anointed uh, prophets and they anointed kings with oil, olive oil. And that was indicative of kind of like an Old Testament precursor to uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Verse 17. And when Samuel saw Saul, and when Samuel saw Saul, boy, say that real fast ten times. Samuel saw Saul. The Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with, with me today and tomorrow, and I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. In other words, everything you want to know, I'll, let, I'll tell you. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, <laughs> here it is. Saul hadn't told this uh, Samuel the prophet anything about his father's asses being lost. But Samuel already knew. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thine mind on them, for they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel... Is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I was Saul, I'd be like, oh, dude, I haven't even told you about my father's asses and, you're, and you already told me they've been found? Really? And, and what do you mean the, the you know, the, the desire of Israel on me? What? Verse 21. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. 
And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before thee, and eat. For unto this people hath it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they rose early, and it came to pass about, about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. In other words, send the servant on his way. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. So evidently, the Lord and Samuel didn't want uh, Saul's servant to hear what's going on here. Uh, chapter... 1 Samuel chapter 10, the next chapter. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Wow. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Zizah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? You know, the father is in sorrow, thinking his son's lost. Verse 3. Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Uh, so they're going to be playing some music here. Verse 6, listen to this. Listen carefully. God, the prophet Samuel is talking to Saul. Verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with, prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. You're going to be turned into a new man. And let it be, when these signs are come upon thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. For God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice, sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and, will, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. God gave him another heart. So what is this another heart? A new heart. Uh, you didn't know that the, um, that the Lord's a, a, a cardiovascular surgeon, did you? He's a heart surgeon. Ezekiel 18.31 Cast away from you all your transgressions. What are transgressions? Sin, wickedness, evil. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, 
and make you a new heart, a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. God's a heart surgeon. He's doing a heart transplant here, right? So, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. 1 Samuel 10, 10. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that has come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Therefore it became a, prof, a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that there were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Samuel said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found, but of the matter of the kingdom, whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. So Saul is only telling him part of the truth. Oh yeah, the prophet of God, he told us that the asses were found. But as far as him, uh, Saul, becoming the king of Israel, he didn't tell him that part. Verse 17, And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mizpah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now remember, Egypt was one of the world powers back in them days. Egypt was a very powerful kingdom. And the Lord by, of and by himself, took Israel out of Egypt. I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God. And ye have this day rejected your God who himself saved you out of all your adversaries and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Natri was taken, and Saul the son of Kish was taken, and when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither, and the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. See, Saul, Saul was afraid. You know, he's hiding himself, because he knows he's going to be king, but he's, he's afraid. He hath hid himself among the stuff, and they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upwards. He was tall. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. You ever hear that before? God save the king? Well, England used to say that. Where do you think they got that from? Where do you think they got that from? Of course, England hasn't had a king since, uh, 
Oh, probably since World War II or before. They've had a queen. And I wouldn't be very proud of that queen, particular queen. Nope. But uh, God save the king. And that's not a knock on you UK people. I know you. a lot of UK people love their queen, but you got to ask yourselves, what has the queen ever done for England lately besides a flood of heathen aliens? Sad, but true. Verse 25. And Samuel took the people, the manner of the kingdom, and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. But the children of Belial said, children of Belial. Remember we read Belial means people of evil, people of wickedness. But the children of Belial, the children of evil and wickedness, said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. All right, let's read chapter 11. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. Then Nahash the Amor Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Am Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. Uh, you want to put out our right eyes? What? And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coast of Israel, and then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers to Gibeah out of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field, and Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? Why is everybody crying? What's going on? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. Boy, I wish we had some people today that had righteous indignation. Where are those people? And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. So Saul says, You people, assemble the army. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000 and the men of Judah 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies. And they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch, and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death to this day, for today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, 
And there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. See, Saul is starting off really good here. And the Lord is with him. The Lord put a new heart into him, gave him the spirit of the Lord. You know, so even though the people wanted a king, and the Lord says, all right, well, I'll give you what you want. But guess what? It's, uh, it's, it always seems to start off good, but then, eh, you know, it seems like you start off good and things go downhill quick. All right, let's read chapter 12, verse 1. Boy, I'll tell you, it's been a while since I've read all this stuff. Verse 1, And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed, whose ox, whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken? You know, have I stolen any of your stuff, any of your livestock? No. Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it you. Uh, Samuel was good, but his sons, not so much. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught. You haven't taken anything. Aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord, and said, we have sinned. You know, those are three words that the Lord loves to hear from our mouths. We have sinned. Because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam, a false god, and Ashtaroth, the goddess. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve thee. You know what? That's what he wants to hear when the, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist, the false prophet appear. We've served the devil. And we and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth, but now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerubbabal and Bedan and Jeph. Ha, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. See, Israel has enemies. You listen to the Billy Go Grams, and we don't have enemies. We just got people that haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Praise the Jesus. When God sent Israel into the land of Canaan, did he say, 
preach to them and tell them about my love for them? No. He said, kill everything that breathes. Everything that breatheth. Destroy them. God has enemies, and God's people Israel have enemies. He didn't say pray for them. He didn't say preach to them. He said destroy them. Don't marry them. Don't take their daughters for your sons, and don't take your sons for their daughters. E, read Ezra chapter 9, people. God said they'd mingled the holy seed with the children of the land. People can't wrap their heads around this stuff. Verse 12. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore behold the king whom ye have chosen and whom ye have desired, behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If, if ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if, Ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. You ever hear this stuff preached in a church? Ah, it's been a long time. Well, I got to admit, I haven't set foot inside a church in probably, probably close to 15 years around about you don't hear this stuff you obey the lord you're blessed and if you don't you're cursed verse 16 now therefore stand and see this great thing which the lord will do before your eyes is it not wheat harvest today I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added, for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Serve the Lord with all your heart, and turn not aside, for then shall ye go after vain things. What's a vain thing? Vain is another word for worthless. For then should ye go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. Remember that Carly Simon song, You're So Vain? Yeah. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. Because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if ye sh shall still do wickedly, Ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. Wow. That's what, the, that's what he wants from us, to serve him with all our heart. Fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. 
for consider how great things he hath done for you. But, oh boy, you know what goats do? They butt. We're supposed to be sheep, not goats. But, if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. All right, let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 13. Um, I did a, um, a video on Ivan Panin, P-A-N-I-N. He was a uh, Russian mathematician, and uh, he looked at um, numbers in Scripture. Uh, there's a guy named E.W. Bullinger. Uh, he did a book, Numbers in Scripture, and there was another one, too. There was an, somebody else that did Numbers in Scripture. But certain numbers in Scripture pop up over and over. 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 24, 40. Those are good numbers. And then you got bad numbers, like 6, uh, 9, 11, 13. Uh, that usually, well, not, I mean, not always. But usually, uh, those numbers are associated with not-so-nice things. Well, here it is, 1 Samuel chapter 13, and something bad's going to happen. Now, you should remember something. Saul is king, and he's of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, remember, the only tribe that was to serve the Lord in the tabernacle, the temple were the Levites, the tribe of Levi. They were the only ones that were allowed to do that. Keep that in mind. And remember, the Philistines, some of the Philistines were giants. Goliath was a Philistine. He was a giant. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 13. This is not a good chapter in the Bible. You know, they divided, uh, I think it was the, um, I'm not sure. I'm throwing this out there. I could be wrong. But I believe it was the Geneva Bible that first divided the uh, chap the Bible up into chapters and, and verses. But uh, when you look at the, the chapters and verse divisions uh, of the Bible, it seems to follow a pattern. It really does. Which is why sometimes I think the Lord's hand was involved in this. So, I, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, don't believe everything I say. Believe everything thus saith the Lord, but don't believe everything thus saith Bob, because Bob's been wrong in the past, and Bob will be wrong in the present, and Bob will be wrong in the future. And besides all that, if uh, Jesus didn't even know what day he was going to return, only the Father, as he said, if there's something Jesus don't know, you better believe Bob don't know. There's things Bob knows and there's things Bob don't know. But 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with Saul and Mishmash, and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. Uh, Jonathan was the son of Saul. And matter of fact, King David, future King David and Jonathan were very, very close friends. Verse 2, And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines, which was in Gibeah, and the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the tr tr trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and Israel also was had in abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul in Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots. Oh boy. And 6,000 horsemen. And people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mishmash, eastward of Beth Haven. 
That's a lot of chariots, people. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. That's a big army, people. 6,000 horsemen, 30,000 chariots. That's a big army. So the people are hiding. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that uh, Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a, bring, a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. Well, guess what, people? The king does not do burnt offerings. That was only for the Levite priests. Only the tribe of Levi was authorized to do burnt offerings unto the Lord. Saul thought he was so important that he's uh, carrying out the office of the priest. No, you're supposed to be the king and the military guy. You're not supposed to be serving the Lord like that. You're, you have no authority to do that. Bad, bad, bad. And he offered a burnt offering. Uh, there were two children of Aaron that offered strange fire before the Lord. They were actually Levi priests. And the Lord killed him for offering strange fire. This is recorded in Leviticus 10, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them in uh, his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Wow. Not good, huh? And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. See, serving the Lord, you come to the Lord His way. It's either His way or the highway. A highway to hell. The Lord killed them. In Numbers 26, 61, and Nabab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. The Lord killed them. And Saul is like, Saul, what the heck? What the heck are you doing? What are you doing, you idiot? And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? What have you done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself thereof and offered a burnt offering. Ooh. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee wow so the Lord because Saul had taken upon himself the priest's office 
the Lord is going to take the kingdom away from Saul. And who did he give it to? David. David. Remember David and Goliath? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? We're going to be reading about that in the next, um, the next uh, lesson, number three. So keep that in mind. You know, Saul started off so good, and then he went downhill. That's usually how it works. Verse 15. And Samuel arose and got him up from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan his son, and the people that were present with him, abode in Gibeah of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped in Mishmash. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistine in three companies. One company turned unto the way that leadeth to Ophrah, unto the land of Shual, Shul, Shol, Shol. And another company turned the way to Beth Horon, and another company turned to the way to the border that looketh to the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Now, there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. So we're talking about a blacksmith here. We're talking about a, somebody that makes metal, you know, weapons. That's what a smith was. You know, a blacksmith. Uh, they used to make uh, horseshoes, remember? You know, if you ever watch those old westerns, blacksmith would make knives. They don't call them blacksmiths anymore, but uh, yeah. You know, I find it funny Guess who were the first metal workers in the army or in the uh, Bible? So here it is. The Philistines have metal workers, but Israel doesn't. You know where the first mention of iron is? Genesis chapter 4. And uh, it's, uh, let's skip down to... We're recording where Cain killed Abel. All right, let's read uh, Genesis 4, 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Uh, there's two Enochs in the Bible. There's Cain's, and there are those that were from... Um, Adam. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamech, and Lamech took him unto him two wives. The name of the one was Adah, and the other the name, the name of the other was Zillah. And Adah bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all, as such handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Iron. An artificer. He was an instructor. Not just a blacksmith, an instructor. Artificer. That's somebody that's highly skilled. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. So, the first time iron's mentioned in the Bible is uh, the children of Cain. Keep that in mind. And the Philistines know how to work with iron, but uh, the children of Israel don't. Is there a Cain, Canaan? Canaanites connection? I think so. But the Bible's kind of silent on it, so it's kind of hard to know. All right, back to 1 Samuel 13, verse 19. 
Now there was no smith, no metal smith, found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords and spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. So their agricultural tools, you know, they had to go to the Philistines and uh, get their stuff sharpened. Yet they had for a file for the mattoxes and for the coulters and for the forks and for the axes and to sharpen the goads. So it came to, day, uh, so it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his sons, was there found. So the only people that had uh, a sword or a spear was Saul and Jonathan. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Mishmash. All right, I think I'm going to close this out. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.